Whenever you fire the grenade launcher, a direct hit will cause the grenade to explode. If you miss, it starts rolling around, and eventually explodes on its own. In contrast, sticky bombs live forever, patiently waiting for you to right-click before exploding. But is that really true? This is the shotgun and the scattergun. It's fair to say that these two weapons are basically the same thing, right? They look different, but from a technical standpoint, they both do the same thing, puke a bunch of bullets at you. So it makes sense, then, to simply recycle the code written for the shotgun, for the scattergun, and save yourself the trouble of redoing something you've already done. Along the same line of thought, sticky bombs are just another pipe bomb, but with a few exceptions. So within TF2's code, it's much smarter to just redefine the few differences in behavior between the sticky bomb and pipe bomb. Instead of exploding on contact, the sticky rebounds off players. It sticks to surfaces instead of bouncing off them. But when it comes to making the sticky live forever, there's a slight road bump. The default pipe bomb code expects to be given a number for how many seconds later it should self-detonate, and don't explode isn't a number. While we could rewrite this part of the code to be better, why not just save ourselves a bunch of work and make the self-detonation timer incredibly long, causing the sticky to effectively last forever? So that's what they did. Technically, sticky bombs don't last forever. Instead, they explode in... 340-282-346-638-528-86 with 22 zeros after that seconds, which is this amount of years. If you had a computer, a copy of TF2, and placed a sticky the instant the Big Bang happened, we'd still be waiting. The universe is estimated to be 13.8 billion years old, which is still 21 digits off the sticky timer. To finally see the sticky go off, we'd have to wait another 10 nonillion years which would bring us into the extremely appropriately named Degenerate Era of the Universe, which is estimated to start one quintillion years after the Big Bang, and last up until one duodecillion after the Big Bang. As you watch the sticky explode, all the stars in the universe around you are also dying out, fizzling out of energy. How poetic. But of course, it's never that easy. Even if we make the insane assumption that your multi nonillion year old computer will physically survive for that long, that's not your only problem. You'd need to deal with integer overflow, a situation where the computer doesn't have enough space to represent numbers above a certain size. Assuming the source engine uses 64 bits, this means that the largest possible number that can be represented is this really big number. But still, quite a bit smaller than the sticky's detonation time. As the timer keeping track of when the sticky should detonate ticks to the maximum number, the next tick resets the timer back to zero since it can't go any higher, causing the timer to never reach the detonation time, looping forever. As a result, to finally see the sticky detonate with your own eyes, you'd also need to recompile both Windows and the Source Engine to support handling such a big number. Usually, I don't mind waiting out a few non-nillion years, but for the impatient ones, we can also just change the sticky's timer and the TF2 source code to something a lot shorter too. So here's a preview into what society would look like a few non-nillion years from now. Wow. Of note, it doesn't make the beeping noise that happens when you right-click as well. Waiting several years until the next big release 